I invite you to stand and join me in the thanksgiving for baptism. Blessed are you, holy God. Long before we received breath and life, your spirit hovered over the waters and brought all things into existence. The air we breathe, the water we drink, and the soil beneath our feet is a precious gift given by you. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. We gather this day on Transfiguration Sunday, the day that Jesus went up the mountain with Peter and James and John and was uh, made radiant, revealed as God's beloved Son. I invite you to be attentive, uh, to, as Scripture says, listen to him, uh, and indeed to, to worship fully this day. We continue with the gathering hymn.
invite the children to join me for the children's message. Anybody wants to accompany them, we gather right up front. Good morning. Hey, Greta. Hey, Anne. How you doing? Good. Lammy came. Nice to see. And your sister. Nice to see. Yeah. So uh, today, I wanted to tell you guys something. It says in the Bible. You know what it says? It says that all who are baptized, which I know that includes you guys, all who are baptized are clothed with Jesus. So think about that, Greta, Annabelle. What do you think it means to be clothed with Jesus? Maybe it simply means to dress like Jesus. What do you think? What would it mean to dress like Jesus? What do you think Jesus wore? I see some, sometimes in the pictures, even maybe you see in Sunday school, maybe it's like a robe. Maybe it almost looks like a dress. Maybe a little bit more like this white one I'm wearing underneath. Maybe something like that. So maybe the Bible means we should actually dress up like Jesus, like it's Halloween. That could be an idea, right? But I also think it means that we're supposed to look and act like Jesus, all the ways that Jesus is. In fact, when the pastor dresses up in some kinds of weird clothes on Sunday morning, that's part of the idea, is that we remember certain things with the way that we dress, that we think in a certain way about the way we dress. So the idea is today we hear in the Bible a lot about Jesus shining like the sun, and so guess what? This looks a little bit like the sun. But Jesus also sometimes dressed in really poor clothes too, right? Not fancy and shiny. Lots of different ways. So there's lots of ways to think about it, but I want you guys to think about that today. That the Bible says that when we're baptized, all of us are clothed with Jesus. Well, I have something for you today. There you go. There you go. Do you want to give one to your sister? All right. All right, what do you see? A dog. Yes, it's my dog, Zazu. And what do you see on Zazu's forehead? It may be a little hard to tell. It is a little cross. It's the sign of the cross in ashes. And so right here in this container, I have those ashes, right? And actually on Wednesday this week, we'll use ashes to make a sign of the cross on our heads, just like Zazu. This is in truth one, one year on Ash Wednesday after we did this in church, I went home and I just went like this on my own forehead because I had one. And then I went like that on Zazu's forehead because I think God loves her too. And she is also God's child. But we put that sign on our foreheads to remember that we are to dress like Jesus. Huh? It's kind of a way to remind ourselves, kind of like putting on clothes. We put on that sign of the cross so that we remember we're supposed to look and act like Jesus all through this special season. So, you guys are welcome to take that cute picture. I also want it to be a reminder that if you want to come on Wednesday night, good deal. And you, on Wednesday night, we can, we can have these on our foreheads too and be clothed with Jesus. You guys are welcome to go to Sunday school. Miss Aaron is right there. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses, come up to me on the mountain and wait there and I will give you the tablets of stone with the law and the commandment, which I have written for their instruction. So Moses set out with his assistant Joshua and Moses went up into the mountain of God. To the elders he had said, wait here for us until we come to you again. For Aaron and her are with you. Whoever has a dispute may go to them. <clears throat> then Moses went up on the mountain, and the crowd covered the mountain. Cloud covered the mountain. The glory of the Lord settled on Mount Sinai, and the cloud covered it for six days. On the seventh day, he called to Moses out of the cloud. Now the appearance of the glory of the Lord was like a devouring fire on the top of the mountain in the sight of the people of Israel. Moses entered the cloud and went up on the mountain. Moses was on the mountain for 40 days and 40 nights. Word of God.
Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus took, him, took with him Peter and James and his brother John and led them up on the high mountain by themselves. As he was transfigured before them and his face shone like the sun, his clothes became dazzling white. Suddenly there were, appeared to them Moses and Elijah talking with him. Then Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, I will make three dwellings here, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. <clears throat> While he was still speaking, suddenly a bright cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud a voice said, This is my son, the beloved. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell to the ground, and were overcome by fear. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, Get up and do not be afraid. And when they looked up, they saw no one except Jesus himself alone. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus ordered them, Tell no one about the vision until after the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. There are lots of clues for us this day that the season of Lent, our 40-day journey that carries us to Holy Week, is about to begin. A reminder that begins on Wednesday at 7 p.m. here uh, as we gather for Ash Wednesday worship. But we hear those words uh, in the story of Moses going up on the mountain, and we hear that he was there for 40 days and 40 nights. Again, that 40, that number that reminds us uh, of the season of Lent to come. I invite you to listen well and to prepare your hearts uh, to journey with Jesus in the weeks ahead. Grace and peace to you from the God whose glory is revealed on the Mount of Transfiguration, but also upon the mountain of Calvary in the glory of the cross. Amen. Three of Jesus' disciples, Peter and James and John, follow him up to a place high in the mountains. And suddenly he was transfigured before them, changed. Jesus' face shone like the sun, and his clothes became dazzling white. This past summer, Natalie and I went to a concert at Red Rocks, just outside of Denver. It was up on a high mountain that overlooked the sparkling city below. And there were more than three disciples at this concert, but it was a kind of transfiguration moment. Like Moses and Elijah, two musicians came out on stage and using their electric guitars, they drove the anticipation of the faithful higher and higher. And then suddenly Brandy Carlisle appeared. She wore a shimmering white suit. She was radiant. She was transfigured by the energy and the excitement 
of an adoring audience. And in that moment, it was impossible to look away. Up on the mountain, Jesus is revealed in glory to his disciples. But just before the climb, Before they go up on that mountain and have that transfiguration experience, Jesus speaks to them not about glory, but about suffering. He says, if any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. Up on the mountain, Jesus is radiant like a rock star on the world's biggest stage. He dazzles outshining even Elijah and Moses. The very sight of Jesus uplifts the soul. To look upon him is to see the victory of God's love over all the forces that would defy it. No more hunger, no more suffering, no more sickness, no more hate. Only the adoration of all these fans who see in Jesus all that they long to be. But still, even in this moment, his words about the cross remain. Even in this moment of dazzling joy, we remember the story that is yet to be told. Jesus will go down the mountain, and eventually he will again climb another. He will once again in this story be lifted up. On the cross, God's beloved will again be revealed. But this time it will not be Moses and Elijah at his side, but it will be two despised criminals. Christ's glory will shine not in clothes of dazzling white, but this time in the blood and the anguish of the cross. When the gospel presents Jesus to us on the Mount of Transfiguration, but also upon the Mount of Calvary later in the story, It asks us to look at him. Look and as it says, listen to him. From the cloud a voice said, This is my son, the beloved. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. Listen to him. When Jesus sings to us like Brandy Carlisle in a white suit, radiant as the sun, it's easy. It's easy to look and listen. It's easy to listen to his voice. I feel this way in worship when we sing shiny new songs like Come to the Water or glorious old ones like Beautiful Savior. In these shining moments of worship with Peter I can proclaim how good Lord to be here. We talk about the way that Jesus is lifted up on the Mount of Transfiguration, but also up on the Mount of Calvary. There is a glory that radiates from both. The Jesus lifted up on these two very different mountains is one and the same, and we are given the glory of the Transfiguration so that we might follow Jesus towards the glory of the cross. We are told this day to look and listen so that we might find courage to follow Jesus in the season ahead, to follow Jesus in the darkness that comes. I mentioned this a little bit in the children's message, but a reminder again, in Galatians, the Apostle Paul says these words, as many of you as were baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. I want to lift that up as a way for us to enter into transfiguration this day. To be baptized and to follow Jesus is to be clothed with Jesus. That's a strange and interesting thing to say, is it not? What does it mean to be clothed with Christ? Before and after Jesus, the Bible uses language similar to this. Language of putting on virtues like clothing. Clothe yourselves with righteousness. Clothe yourselves with joy. Put on the full armor of God, the breastplate of righteousness, the belt of truth. But these virtues that we are invited to try on like clothes, they're not a person. 
In baptism, Paul says that we are doing more than just putting on the clothing of goodness and virtue, trying to be good people. It's more than that. In baptism, we are somehow clothing ourselves with a person. We are clothing ourselves with Jesus himself. This is the unique gift of the incarnate Christ. When God takes on human flesh, all that God desires of us is revealed, is made known, is made visible. We can actually look upon Jesus and see God's glory. We can listen to Jesus' voice and hear the voice of God. We can do all of this because the beloved Son is fully God and fully human. Jesus is the God we can learn to wear like a garment. We can copy his style. We can try on all that he models for us. I have my doubts that I can pull off a sparkly white suit with the ease of Jesus or of Brandy Carlisle, but I think I can embrace their radiance. I can embrace the joy of love's victory. I can learn to celebrate, to put on a party suit, as it were. I can put on Christ and celebrate the grace and mercy that is already mine, that has already been given to me. Up on the mountain, we are called to dress ourselves in the sure hope of God's beloved Son. God invites us to be transfigured by our belief. Believe. Believe that you are God's beloved. Believe that God looks upon you just like he looks upon Jesus and says that this is his beloved, that with you he is well pleased. Clothe yourselves with Christ so that your life shimmers and shines. This gospel that we proclaim frees the captive. It brings hope to the hopeless. Open up your closet. Choose something a little fun, even a little flamboyant. Believe that you are loved, that you are set free. Here at Christ Memorial, I think it means dress a bit more like Barb White's. Shine with the good news of the God you wear. Shine with the good news of the God you wear. Thinking of Jesus in white sequins and choosing to dress like him is important. But again, the good news that we proclaim in the church should actually look and sound good, right? But more than that, the gospel reminds us that it's not only the sequins and the sparkles. Jesus is not only clothed in dazzling white. Again, like we already mentioned, he is also clothed in the clothing of Calvary, the blood and the anguish of the cross. Putting on the humble clothing of the Christ who suffers and bleeds with criminals and with outcasts. That's not so comfortable. With the disciples, we resist it. We need that thundering voice of God commanding us to look and to listen and to follow Jesus Not only on the Mount of Transfiguration, but all the way to that Mount of Calvary. There was a time when I regularly went in and visited a local prison. I led a Lutheran worship service in that place for inmates. And when I would go into the prison, I wore my clergy shirt and collar. I didn't think about it much, but I think I was trying to identify myself as one who was clothed with Christ. I remember something a prison guard said to me one time as I was passing through security. He looked at me and he said that I should not wear khaki pants. Khaki was the drab color that the inmates wore. It was the color of prisoners, the color of felons. And if anything were to go wrong on the inside, that guard reminded them that I would not want to be confused with them. I wouldn't want to be mistaken for an inmate. That guard was trying to instill fear in me. But his words actually had a very different effect. They helped me look in the mirror and see myself as I was 
and perhaps even more clearly how Jesus wants me to be. They opened my heart to the calling of baptism, telling me to clothe myself with Christ. Not just on the Mount of Transfiguration, but also on the Mount of the Cross. And in that place, in that prison, khaki was the color of the cross. Khaki was the color used to crucify men again and again by calling them inmates or felons but never beloved children of God. This is the truth. We cannot love what we turn away from in fear. We cannot love what we turn away from in fear. And so Jesus leads us to that place, to the cross. Jesus clothes himself in the glory of a prison issue khaki uniform and reveals that God's love lives within the prison walls. God chooses to clothe himself like the crucified. Clothing ourselves with Christ does mean putting on a sequin party dress, but it also means wearing the rejection and the shame of the last and of the least. As we rise each morning, as we open up our closets, we may not know which outfit to choose, which Christ to put on, but that is okay. As the gospel teaches us, we only need to look to Jesus and to listen to him. Clothe yourselves each day by following the God who takes on flesh and who walks among us. God in Jesus is the God we are clothed with. This week, we gather Wednesday evening at 7 o'clock and take on the sign of the ashes on Ash Wednesday and Lent begins. We mark our brows with the sign of the cross and we recommit ourselves to be clothed with Christ each and every day. In the season ahead, look to the God whose glory is revealed in both joy and also in suffering. Remember your baptism and put on the Christ who wears white sequins and also the Christ who wears prison khaki. Confess your fear and return to the Lord. Clothe yourselves with Christ. Amen.
Please be seated. Called to follow Jesus, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Embolden your church as it witnesses to the majesty and mercy of your Son. Move us to share our stories of your faithfulness and forgiveness. May our lives proclaim your greatness. Merciful God, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. Dwell with your whole creation from the tallest mountain peak to the deepest valley. Bless the work of conservation organizations and protect vital habitats. Support the work of disaster relief agencies around the world. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Turn our eyes to the radiance of your love that we might follow you in lifting up the oppressed. Help us work to end white supremacy and the sinful practice of mass incarceration in our nation. Quiet our fears and make us instruments of the freedom and justice that you desire. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Give shelter to those lacking safe homes. Spur communities to work for fair housing for all. Protect our neighbors whose dwellings do not keep out dangerous cold or heat. Accompany with your touch those who are homebound, sick, or isolated. We pause now to offer up the names of those who need your peace and healing, silently or aloud. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Make us eager to receive your word in scripture. Help us recognize Jesus' voice in the needs of our neighbors. Make us confident to follow the way of the cross. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We now take time to offer up any other prayers silently or aloud. For what else do the people of God pray? Receive our thanksgiving for the holy ones who have guided us in faithfulness. We pray for the family of Pastor Dennis Bushkovsky and all who are grieving the death of a loved one. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We bring to you our needs and hopes, O God, trusting your wisdom and power revealed in Christ crucified. Amen. Amen. We have much to celebrate and be thankful for, uh, to be transfigured in joy, as it were. I uh, invite you to just take a moment uh, as we receive a musical offering to just listen to God as Jesus, uh, we're told to listen to him. Uh, but invite you just to reflect on your call to be generous with your life, uh, whether that's with uh, financial resources or your energies or just your presence, uh, loving your neighbors. I invite you to reflect on your call to generosity at this time.
Liberating God, you break the bonds of injustice and free the oppressed. In thanksgiving for your grace in our lives, we offer these gifts. Shape us as people of justice and freedom. Amen. Amen. This is Christ's table. Uh, you belong here. You are loved and welcomed here. I invite you to participate in Holy Communion. Um, all are invited to participate this day. Uh, I invite you to stand and join me in the celebration of Holy Communion. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. By the leading of a star, he was shown forth to all nations. In the waters of the Jordan, you proclaimed him, your beloved Son, and in the miracle of water turned to wine, he revealed your glory. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth, and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy. night in which he's betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death his resurrection and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, Our Father who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We commune at the altar rail this day and invite you to come. All is ready.
The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. <coughs> Amen. Amen. Holy One, we thank you for the healing that springs forth abundantly from this table. Renew our strength to do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with you. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. I invite you to share a word or sign of God's peace. Perhaps you already noticed I'm excited about Lent to come. Uh, just a kind of a third reminder, uh, we have a fuller season of worship and opportunity to participate in the journey with Jesus uh, in this season of 40 days that prepares us for Holy Week and Easter. Lent begins this Wednesday, Ash Wednesday at 7 p.m. Uh, we gather here and as a community take on the, the sign of the cross and commit to follow Jesus in this season. Uh, and then we have actually throughout March, throughout the season of Lent, every Wednesday at 7 p.m. we have evening prayer and you are invited to participate in person or by Zoom. Uh, it'll be a simple service. It's only kind of 20, 25 minute worship service. So it's kind of abbreviated, uh, but a lovely time uh, just to gather and center and again, keep on our minds uh, what it means to follow Jesus and clothe ourselves with Christ throughout this season of Lent. Um, as uh, was mentioned, we hope you stick around for fellowship and gather uh, for a little king cake and Mardi Gras. I invite you to stand and receive God's blessing. The God who faithfully brings forth justice and breaks the oppressor's rod, bless, strengthen, and uphold you today and always. Amen. Build a longer table, not a higher wall, feeding those who hunger, making room for all, feasting together, stranger turns to friend, Christ breaks walls to pieces, walls to division. Jesus. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.